Hello everyone. So what is Dash? Dash is a form of digital cash. Dash is similar to its counterpart Bitcoin, however Dash has much greater benefits that I'll go over later in later lectures. Dash has been soaring quickly since the beginning of this year among all cryptocurrencies. Dash at the time of recording, holding strong at number 5 in overall market cap. Dash follows the same path as Bitcoin, but it is a two-tier network that makes it far greater than Bitcoin. This tier system allows Dash to be more anonymous and present itself more like cash. With that said, you can choose whether or not you want to be anonymous. You can see what Dash address sent coins to what address on the blockchain like Bitcoin. However, once you have coins, you can put them into a pool which you trade your Dash with others in the community. Lastly, you have the ability with Dash transactions to happen almost Im instantly. These instant transactions are confirmed with what is known as the Masternode Network. Throughout this course, I'll be talking more in depth about Masternodes, as well as Private Send and Instant Send, the two benefits of having a second tier network in order to make Dash as a digital cash more of a primary alternative to having paper money. Thank you everyone for joining me in this lecture. In the next lecture, I'll be covering what are the benefits of Dash a little bit more in detail as well as just a brief overview of private send and instant send before we can get into the more in-depth nitty-gritty lectures. Thank you. What are the benefits of Dash? The benefits of Dash are endless. The community is growing rapidly every day. If you'd like to be a part of the Dash community, also known as Dash Nation, please join the link below in the description and it will be an invite to join the Dash Nation Slack room where you can join the Dash community and talk about Dash. So what are the benefits of Dash? Well, the main benefits of Dash are instant send, private send, and the low transaction fees. Oh, and I can't forget the master nodes. All of this will be explained in depth in later sections of the course. I hope you Enjoy the next section on how to store your Dash and keep it safe. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In today's lecture, we're going to be talking about masternodes. Uh, what is a masternode? It is a bunch of computers that are formed together in a way on a network where it is considered a second tier level to the original blockchain. What is the original blockchain really quick? It is just the basic peer-to-peer -peer exchange from sending Dash from one address to another without any in between anything in between. What does the what is like what is the purpose of actually having the masternode network? Well, it allows for alternative features such as instant send and private send. I go over these in the advanced section of this course, which could be considered just beginner to intermediate level, actually. But another thing to think about is, well, how do you get this master node? Well, you need to have a thousand dash as collateral. Uh, it just shows that you believe in, to, believe in the network. Another thing about having a masternode is it is used for budget voting for the decentralized governance system, which I will go over in the governance section. At the end of this section, I'm going to be talking about how you get a masternode. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's continue on to the next lecture on 
is a master node even worth having? Thank you everyone for taking the time to view this lecture. If you have any questions further in depth about what a master node is specifically, please leave your questions and comments in the Q&A. Thank you. Is it worth it to have a master node? If you are an av avid digital currency enthusiast and you want to support the network, of course. If you're a supporter of Dash and want to earn dividends, that is also a major benefit. Um, as I was saying in the last lecture, what is a master node? There are benefits to having a master node, even though you must for or show that you have incentive within the Dash network, uh, the 1000 Dash, but you earn 45% of all block rewards generated by the Dash miners, and these rewards accumulate about 1.7 Dash payouts about every seven days. So that's a substantial amount of rewards at today. Uh, I believe the monthly reward is $1,000 of dividends. Uh, thank you, everyone, and I hope you enjoy the next lecture on what if you can't afford 1000 Dash because Dash is about $160 today, and for 1000 Dash, that is about $195,000. Um, thank you, and I hope you enjoy the next lecture. Hello, everyone. I wanted to talk to you about something that is very crucial. Um, what if you can't afford 1000 Dash to have a Dash Masternode? Uh, Dash Masternodes are extremely expensive today. Uh, they run ab about $195,000. So there is awesome services out there, and this is just as a reference. This is not saying, oh, go and do this. I want everyone to make sure that they do their own research. If you have any questions about services, please leave them in the comments and I will help you decide if it's a service that's actually meant for you. I wanted to talk about masternode.me. This is a service that is actually run by one of the Dash core team developers. Um, they are available in the Dash Nation Slack to ask any questions about their service, if you have any. But today, let's take a quick peek at their website. Uh, this is masternode.me. They are a service that actually provides shares of a masternode. Uh, what is a share for a masternode? It's about, or it's 25 dash per share, and you can acquire as many shares as you actually want. And what they do is actually tell you the earnings per month if you had a thousand dash, and they break it down for you to how much you would earn per 25 dash. And they also, they also cover exactly what I'm covering with you here today. What is a masternode? Uh, what is masternode.me? Why choose this site? Uh, Moo Cow Moo is a veteran backend developer. He is the developer that I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture. Um, if you have any questions and you want to reach out to him in the Dash Nation Slack, uh, his handle is Moo Cow Moo. He is a very trusted member of the community, and I do want to say again that I am not promoting him at all. Uh, please do your own research, and if you have any questions in seeking out uh, trusted services that offer shares for masternodes, I encourage you to leave them in the comments. And he even goes for over earnings for 25 dash you'll earn 0 0.038 dash 
for each payout. So essentially you're earning for four shares, which is 100 Dash, you're earning 8.5% of the total Masternode payout earnings. And he goes over what his services cost. Um, if you have any questions about masternode.me, please leave them in the comments. If you have any questions about any other masternode share services, please leave them in the comments as well, and I will get to them promptly. Um, thank you, and I hope you guys enjoy the next section. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dash Evolution section of this course. What is Dash Evolution? It is taking the next step, making Dash a future payment system. The purpose of Evolution is to make Dash as a digital cash easy to use and access for all users. And when I say all users, I mean people that don't really understand blockchain infrastructure. They're used to simple things such as PayPal, uh, sending someone money via their to their email address. And that is the concept behind Dash Evolution, to make payment processing even simpler. So even someone's 85 or 90 year old grandmother or grandfather can use Dash. Right now Dash is, or Dash Evolution is in more of an alpha stage. Uh, currently, the community is waiting on the Dash Pay system, which is expected around September. And then, carrying on to that, the Dash Pay Evolution Wallet Testnet, which is like a testing server to get some more bugs and kinks out. Dash Evolution is going to be one of the true game changers for mass adoption. However, we can't really expect the first version of Dash Evolution until June 2018. Yes, June 2018. That is quite a long ways away. However, with Dash Evolution, it's going to make an easier payment option for merchants to accept digital cash as an alternative to Visa or MasterCard, American Express. One thing that I'm really excited for is even though Dash Evolution isn't supposed to come out or Dash Evolution version 1 isn't supposed to come out until June 2018, there's supposed to be an alpha release version towards the end of 2017. So, with that being said, let's move along into more about is Dash Evolution a good thing? I've covered some of the aspects, but let's just talk about it a little bit more. If you have any questions, please leave them in the Q&A section. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the next lecture. All right, everyone. Is Dash Evolution a good thing? Plain answer, simple, yes. Uh, what is Dash Evolution going to solve? Dash Evolution is the concept behind mass adoption. Many people, maybe even yourself, are new to cryptocurrencies and don't really understand the ecosystem and all these cryptographic strings like Bitcoin and Dash addresses have in order to secure your wallet and make your wallet more anonymous. Not saying like, oh, this is Albert's wallet. Oh, this is Dave's wallet. This one is Sabrina's wallet. It's not specific. Dash Evolution is going to eliminate that, making it more user-friendly, and everyone understands, like, email, emails have been around for 20 years. Everyone knows how to use email addresses. Dash Evolution is 
going to be that user friendly. Say my email albert at gmail.com. I'm going to send Kayla 5 dash at Kayla at gmail.com. Uh, plain and simple as that. It's very exciting, and we are all, everyone in the Dash community is just ecstatic about it. Um, when can you expect this? Well, I'm going to be going that over in the next lecture if you're looking to learn more about Dash Evolution. Hello everyone. In this section, we're going to be talking about three major factors that have to deal with Dash governance. Dash has a decentralized governance, also known as a Dash DAO, or Decentralized Autonomous Organization. We're also going to be covering Dash Treasury and Dash Proposals. But that being said, let's jump into Dash's decentralized governance. All right, everyone. We are going to be talking about Dash decentralized governance. Uh, how is the decentralized governance run? It's run by masternodes. Masternodes are allowed to vote on the proposals, which will be discussed in the upcoming section or lecture. The blockchain funds the masternodes or what the masternodes vote on. Uh, where does the funds come from? They just don't magically are there. The funds come from Dash miners. Uh, if you remember from an earlier lecture about the masternodes, the masternodes get paid 45% of what Dash miners mine. 10% of what Dash miners mine goes to the Dash Treasury, which I'm going to be discussing in the next lecture. And you might wonder, well, Dash miners are doing all this mining. Do they get anything? Um, yes, uh, they, they get the remaining 45% of what's being mined. You might ask, what are the masternodes voting on? They are usually projects that support the grow of Dash and benefit the whole growth of Dash in altogether. And lastly, Dash Evolution, which is a big topic for Dash, it is going to be one of the first decentralized payment processors. Um, you can think of Dash Evolution as a more advanced version of PayPal, but decentralized per from a dis from a decentralized perspective. And moving back a little bit, when talking about the decentralized governance, if you compare Dash to Bitcoin, they the governance is drastically different. The Bitcoin is controlled mainly by miners. So there's not really any major growth a aspect aspect for evolution, so to speak. Um, there with Bitcoin, uh, the big the Bitcoin mining difficulty is so difficult that people formed these pools in order to be more profitable in solving the blocks, and there are very few mi Bitcoin mining pools making it very centralized. Enough on Bitcoin, we're sticking to Dash. <laughs> um, if you have any questions about Dash decentralization and governance, um, please leave them in the comments and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And we are going to be continuing on to the next lecture on Dash Treasury. Um, thank you for watching this lecture, and I hope you enjoy the next lecture. Hello everyone. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about the Dash Treasury. Um, what is the Dash Treasury? The Dash Treasury is a decentralized voting platform 
that the master nodes vote on in order to fund projects that individuals are paid by dash where do these where do the funds come from well as i've mentioned before dash miners are mining dash and 10% of every dash that is mined in each block is goes to the dash treasury known as a super block which stays in the blockchain and once masternodes vote on proposals which I'm going over in the next lecture get distributed throughout a decentralized form on the blockchain and pays out the requested budget that individuals are seeking. For the Dash Treasury, do you have to be a master node to vote? Unfortunately at this time, yes. Um, it's just a way to show that you ha actually have incentive in the network and you want advancement because you're you actually put up a lot of money to support the network. Uh, if you recall from the last section, that masternodes are 1,000 dash, and at today's price, about $160,000. Uh, how many masternodes can vote? Currently, over 4,000. And in, when I'm showing you the proposal, I'll show you exactly how many dash masternodes are out right now. And with that said, if you have any questions about Dash Treasury, I would be happy to answer any of them. I know I covered it very briefly. I will be going over it a little bit more in the Dash proposal where you can actually see some hands-on interaction with what the, how the Treasury actually works. Um, thank you, and I hope you enjoy the next lecture on Dash proposals. Hello, everyone. We are talking about Dash proposals. Probably, it, sa it seems like an easy way to get Dash in the beginning, but you generally need to have a good idea, especially if you're going to be putting up some Dash. So let's get to it. Uh, can anyone submit a proposal to the Dash network? Of course. Um, it is fair game. Anyone can submit a proposal. But there is a cost to it. It's five dash to submit a proposal. And there is a section on the dash.org slash forums area where you can sum it, submit a pre-proposal and request people to vote on it with a poll. And depending on that and suggestions from the community, they will help you improve your proposal in order to help it get fun funded. Uh, is there a limit to a request amount? Um, yes and no. Um, yes, in the fact that each each month there is a voting for the masternodes for Dash proposals. There's only a certain amount of Dash that can actually be allocated out to the budgets. So, and then I say no because if you're idea or project is worthwhile to the Dash network, there's absolutely no minimum that really needs to be on there. But if you're just saying, oh, I'm going to pass out some Dash stickers in Seattle, for example, or San Francisco, and you're requesting the 100 Dash to do that, the possibility of that being voted yes is slim to none. With that said, let's actually check out some Dash proposals. A good way to see where Dash proposals can be voted on is dashcentral.org. Alright everyone, we are here at dashcentral.org. Um, let's do a quick tour. So right now at the top you can see that there are registered 200 or 2464 masternodes that 
are actually willing to vote. And there is the dash price at the top, $172. So essentially a master node now is $172,000. And here is a quick chat box. And let's check out the budgets. So these are examples of budgets. The ones that are in green or passing are going to be voted up or are going to pass in the next budget payment, which ends in or which occurs in seven days. And the voting deadline for all master nodes is four days. This is actually a perfect example with the the voting period ending. As you can see, some people have commented on it with the little question bubble. And the plus and then the number is the exceeded amount that has occurred past the minimum amount for voting yes. And as you can see, there's some red and yellow. Yellow means it's approaching a passing budget and then red is very limit limited so let's check out this newest one conferences by or conferences the trading show uh, this is by baby giraffe he is the ceo of that the dash core team now so as you can see you can just have a simple title the owner which you have to register the number of payments, no payments have occurred yet, and they are only requesting one payment. They're requesting a one-time payment of 301 dash or $51,000. And masternodes have voted 438 yes votes, one no vote, and zero abstain. These are the categories, the only categories that masternodes are currently allowed to vote on. They recently added the abstain option. If you're not sure what abstain means, it's sort of like the easiest way to describe it is just you're not 100% sure yes or no. You're somewhere in between. And then the proposal details is everything going over what they are requesting the dash for. And as you can see right here, this is a cross post from the Dash forum, uh, exactly where you can see the pre-proposals. And anyone can submit a, co a comment as long as you're logged in. And here are individuals commenting about the, the budget proposal and then Baby Giraffe, the proposal owner. Thank you everyone for taking the time to finish this lecture. If you have any questions, please leave them in the Q&A and I'll get to them as quickly as possible. And with that being said, I hope you enjoy the next section on Dash Evolution. Hello everyone. Today I wanted to cover Dash Wallets. What are we going to cover in this section? Well, I wanted to present what the purpose of having a Dash Wallet is, uh, suggest a few wallets, and go over how to install those wallets, and how to get Dash onto the wallets if you already have another cryptocurrency. And in another section, I wanted to go over how to acquire Dash directly. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you look forward to the next few lectures about why we need to have Dash wallets, as well as suggestions for what Dash wallets to have. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the Dash Core QT wallet, where you can get this wallet, how to install it on the Mac, and what makes this wallet different than other wallets.
So we're here at the official Dash website, dash.org slash wallets. This is one of the best sources where you can find quick information about Dash, especially hardware on how to store your Dash. So today we're going to be installing a Dash desktop wallet. We are going to be installing the Dash core wallet. This is the official Dash core wallet. It is for peer-to-peer -peer client. This is, to my knowledge, the only wallet right now on desktop that actually has instant send, private send, and the governance model, which is explained in later lectures. And in this lecture, I'm just going to be covering the Dash Core Wallet basic features. And I'm going to have an advanced section on more in-depth features and hands-on activities for this wallet. So in order to download on the Mac, make sure that you have OS X selected. Download DMG. All right, once you have downloaded it, go ahead and go to your downloads and open up the driver. Simply drag the dash core over to your applications. Let's close this and go to, oops, sorry, let's go to applications and click dash QT. And you'll need to click open. Let the wallet start loading the block index, as you can see at the very bottom, verifying the blocks, loading wallet. Um, because this is the first time you're opening the wallet, it could take a little bit because it has, we'll have to sync back up with the network. And as you can see, this is the Dash Core Wallet. It is version 0.12.1.5. Uh, the wallet holds many features such as Instant Send and Private Send. And I will be going over those more in depth in the Advanced section. All right, Let's, let me resize this window real quick. As you can see in the bottom left hand corner, it says synchronizing with network. This, this is just, uh, as I was saying before, synchronizing with the Dash blockchain. So in order to get synced properly with the blockchain, it potentially has to go from recognizing block, block one I believe, yeah, block one, and then it has to synchronize all the blocks up until the current one, which I am actually not sure which block number it's on, actually. I feel like it's in the 600,000s, but can't be certain. And right now it's synchronizing the master nodes in the bottom left-hand corner, which was discussed in another section synchronizing master node payments so what I would suggest actually is to let the wallet run on your computer uh, just open it up go do some errands cook dinner uh, do whatever you need to. Uh, I'm not sure about the duration of how long it will need to sync, but I will return once the wallet is synced up properly with the network, and I will let you know how long it took. Thank you, and I will speak with you shortly. All right, everyone. I actually got some exciting news. It didn't take very long to sync with the blockchain, about seven minutes. 
Uh, I might be mistaken because uh, in version 0.11 it used to have to resync with the entire blockchain which uh, took a while. Um, please leave a comment below uh, if your wallet actually takes longer than uh, 15 minutes to sync to the blockchain. I have fairly quick fast internet, 100 megabytes up and down so I, I might have been able to uh, sync up quicker than I anticipated. So let's do a quick tour actually. So as you can see uh, this is the Dash Core Wallet. Um, right here in the big D area or the giant D this will appear your recent transactions and what we will do actually in the advanced section we will be I'll do a demonstration of private send and see how uh, fast it is and show you in the transactions about how many blocks and go more in depth into that but for now let's just stick with the overview so as you can see we have available dash because we just installed it we're gonna have zero dash uh, the pending dash is going to be zero and total dash is zero so pending dash is either or it's going to be dash that you're actually going to wait to be confirmed oh look at that it actually tells you what it is if you hover over pending dash and total dash is the amount that you'll have between available and pending and then available is the amount of dash that you can send to someone uh, private send is a service where to it to become more anonymous it's not it is you are sending dash to the master nodes which is the second tier network and what they do is take your dash and someone else's dash and mix them up in fragments but be it's, a, it's safe. I'll be doing a demonstration of that in the advanced section at the end of the course. The dash actually never leaves your wallet. So that is one of the safety fe features. And what, why it's safe is because what the master nodes do is they have 1,000 dash collateral. So if something were to happen they are responsible. So, private send balance is zero because we just started the wallet. The amount of rounds, 1,000 dash in two rounds. And if you're looking for more info, click more info and it'll go over the complete basics. Uh, okay, so let's click send. Here, you will be able to pay anyone with a dash address. Simply just paste it in the pay to box. And you can, what's cool about the dash core wallet is you can label your transactions. Say you go to bitcart.io. I'll have a lecture on uh, places where you can actually use dash and spend dash. So you could send, say, bitcart.io and today's date is July 20th and you can say how much uh, you're sending in this tran or you can say uh, I want I'm getting a $50 Amazon gift card from bitcart.io and then you can put the dash equivalent let's just say it's 0.12 right now $50 and then you subtract, if you subtract the fee, it'll take the 0 .0002 dash out of that. So I usually leave this unchecked. And as you can see at the bottom, there's instant send. If you enable that, the fee will go up slightly, but it'll confirm faster. It'll get there 
essentially instantly. Like, say I am, I have cash in my wallet. I pull the cash out and I hand it to you. Boom, instant. Let's go to receive. Uh, this is if you're requesting funds from someone. So you can create a label. So say um, I loaned my sister $50 and I want $50 worth of dash back. Uh, sister payment. And request the amount, point one two. Message, please pay me back $50 worth of dash. What you can do is have request instant send already enabled. And then click request payment. Here it will generate you a QR code. The dash address the amount that she needs to pay, what it is, and a message saying, oh, please pay me $50 worth of dash, and then instant send enabled. Lastly, for now, is transactions. Here, you'll see every single transaction that you've ever used your Dash Core wallet with and you are able to ex export these files into a CVS file, uh, essentially able to open the spreadsheet into like Excel or any open source spreadsheet program you might have. Uh, dash core at the top just tells you about the dash core and then bash about the QT. Oh, we have the spinning wheel. Okay, so now we're back at file. Here, you can set up or back up your wallet. And this is a file that will save as a .dat file. Uh, so what you could do is save this on an external hard drive and it could be your version of a cold wallet and if you want to keep the dash core wallet closed all the time go back up to file and let's check out sending addresses here you can actually create a brand new address so let's click new let's label this Udemy example click OK oh I'm sorry this is the sending address let's check out the receiving address the receiving address as you can see we have the sisters payment there already with a custom dash address and then the no label dash address is when we first started up the Dash Core Wallet, it created us a brand new address. However, we can create an e a newer one. Let's just say Udemy example. Click OK. Boom. It generated a brand new Dash address for us. Click Close. Go back up to File, click Sending Addresses. If, say, with this, my mom requested money from me, I can say uh, Payment to Mom for phone bill, which I actually do, uh, especially it makes it easier and it gets her into the digital currency realm. So here I would paste her dash address so it's the same all the time. And be, we, uh, be cautious 
all dash addresses begin with an X or a 7. It's more typical for them to begin with a si or an X. Let's just close that for now. Click Close. Settings. Encrypt Wallet. You can enter a passphrase for your wallet. It makes it more secure and it's generally very simple. Let, let's create a new one right now. This is actually ideal before you have any dash in your wallet. Once you have your passwords in, click OK. And then you get a warning. Warning, if you encrypt your wallet and lose your phrase, you will lose all of your dash. Are you sure you want, wish to encrypt your wallet? Yes. So make sure you remember your passphrase as well as remember. Er, make sure you remember your passphrase and make sure that you create it without any dash in it, just as a precaution. We have an another alert that says Dash Core will close now and finish the encryption process. Remember that encrypting your wallet cannot fully protect your Dash from being stolen by malware infecting your computer. I go over this in the wallet safety section that is after this section. I'm going to click OK and I will resume once I reopen the Dash Core wallet. Alright everyone, I have reopen my dash core wallet and it is encrypted I'm actually very excited for the advanced section when we can get some dash onto this wallet so I can show you some private send and some instant send in action but let's carry on so there is information it just gives you general information about more in depth of the wallet and uh, these are more uh, features for advanced users. Everything I'm covering is for uh, general information that anyone can use. Uh, if I'm like teaching this to my mom or my grandma or my dad. So here we have rescan blockchain files. This is important if you believe your balance is out of whack. Say you think you think uh, your wallet should have two dash on it, and there's only 1.8 dash showing. You would rescan all the blockchain files. Let's close this. Tools and op open Masternode configuration file. I'm having another app called Atom open. Here you can see the masternode configuration file. Uh, this is if you are a lucky individual and have a thousand dash. Uh, this is how you would uh, begin the setup process for it. Alright everyone, this was a quick introduction to the Dash Core Wallet and I will be doing again a demonstration on how to use Private Send and Instant Send in the advanced section at the end of the course. Um, thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the next lecture and found this information useful. Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about JAX. Uh, what is JAX? JAX is a blockchain interface wallet. Um, I'm going to be covering more about JAX on their website at JAX.io. We are also going to be covering the installation process of JAX and how you can exchange some Bitcoin for Dash. All right, everyone, we are here at jax.io this is their main landing page here you can see everything 
that JAX has to offer. They are a blockchain interface. Uh, what does that mean exactly? Uh, they support multiple digital currencies, such as here at the top, Zcash, going down to the right, Litecoin, then Bitcoin in the far right. In the bottom right, they have Ethereum. And right here, the fox at the bottom, that's not actually a digital currency. It is an exchange that is embedded in the wallet, which I'm going to be demonstrating at the end of this lecture. The coin here on the left is Augur. On the far left is Dash. And in the top left, Ethereum Classic. Uh, to my knowledge, Jax is constantly growing and adding more digital currencies. Hence, this little grayed out circle right here in all the corners. So, potential for expansion. Dash likes to have their users in control, meaning that it is a crisp, user-friendly interaction. This is permissionless access, meaning that there is no user data. So they don't know your name, your phone, phone number, if you have the JAX mobile wallet. And continuing back on to the design, it's led for the user experience. They want it to be very crisp, user-friendly, and smooth, and operate at a phenomenal level. And, last but not least, for all the techies out there, they have their visible code right here at view source code at the top. It is all their past versions. So right now, I believe they're on JAX 1.22, similar code like that. Oh, sorry. They are on JAX 1.2. So they have all their past data. Or, and choose your version. And you can go all the way back to 0.0.12. And they have JAX available for anyone, depending on your operating system, the browser you prefer. They want to make it as user-friendly as possible. So with that being said, let's get JAX. JAX is also a free wallet. Today I'm going to be installing it on my Mac desktop. So I'm going to download the DMG file. Alright everyone, once you have finished downloading the JAX installer for your preferred operating system, now double click the installer. And for a Mac, all you need to do is drag over the JAX app icon and drag it into the applications folder. And now it is just finished copying. And now what we'll do is open the JAX app. And because JAX was just downloaded, we're going to need to confirm that we want to open it. And now we are going to start the set or the setup process for JAX 1.2. So all you need to do is click continue and agree to their licensing terms. If you feel, feel like you would like to read their terms of service, uh, you can please do so. Uh, click Accept. Because this is the first time that we are installing a new wallet with JAX, we're going to create a new one, or you can pair or restore a previous wallet that you have had in the past. Uh, this will require a 12-word phrase to restore your wallet. So we're going to create a new wallet. So all we need to do is click Continue. There is an Express option and a Custom option. You can find out what each are based on the little information icon. So Express, obviously, we're going to set up the wallet as quickly as possible. Custom, select the option. If you would like to customize your wallet, you'll be able to select your wallet token 
and currency set up a security pin and back up your wallet. I can show you how to do this after we finish doing the express setup. So today with JAX 1.2 they support all of these coins and I believe RSK testnet is in beta right now but today we are going to just have a Bitcoin and Dash digital currency and now take me to the wallet takes a few moments there we go we have our fresh Bitcoin address and our fresh dash address dash addresses usually begin with an X and Bitcoin addresses usually begin with a one just some friendly information right there so now we can go deeper into the wallet click the in the top right corner you'll see a hamburger icon and now this will take you to the mem the menu wallets and currency currency is your country's fiat dollar or your paper dollars so i'm in the united states i use the usd under the wallets tab it is all the coins so you can preferably go back later and add additional coins to your wallet if you see fit. Back at the menu we have tools, settings, help, bulletin, jacks, about. So let's start with the about. About just gives you information and resources in order to help you with your jacks wallet. The bulletin is for updates that Jax is working on. Help, uh, just FAQ in order to make your wallet integration as smooth as possible. Settings, we have set up security pin. This is for uh, when you're wanting to send Dash or Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency or digital currency that you're looking to send, you'll have to enter a security phrase. Uh, reset cash. This will resync your uh, tokens or digital currencies with the blockchain. Back in settings, we have BTC mining fee. Uh, BTC mining fee is the charge that you pay for sending your digital currency or for when you send Bitcoin. So a normal fee uh, depends, or the fees depend based on uh, the network difficulty and how many people are sending uh, Bitcoin and depends on how much each block is f filling up. So if you have normal, which I would just recommend just so you're not throwing too much extra Bitcoin out of your wallet compared to fast and then slow. Sometimes with slow, it will take over 24 hours. It just dep really depends on what is going on with the network at the time. So let's click on tools. So with tools, you can set up a backup wallet and view your backup phrase. I'm not going to display this in this video. It's just your 12 key keyword passphrase and when uh, viewing your passphrase I would highly recommend you write it down with a pen and paper and file it away and then display private keys this is just the private keys to your wallet I'll go over this in a later lecture involving the paper wallets and then the pair device is pair your wallet to or from another device with backup phrase or pairing code. So you could essentially have a Jax wallet on your phone and a Jax wallet on your desktop. And then transfer paper wallet. If you have a paper wallet, you can request the private key by typing it in from your paper wallet. You can, I'll be going over this 
also in a later lecture involving the paper wallets. And that is it for the da or for the jacks settings and everything like that. Now we are actually going to send some Bitcoin into Dash directly within the Jax wallet. As you can see, I just sent myself some Bitcoin from another wallet of mine, just, uh, just 0.01 Bitcoin. And you can see how the wallet transaction history says unconfirmed. We are waiting for the blockchain to confirm that I sent Bitcoin from my other wallet to the Jax wallet. And once it's confirmed, I will then show you how to shapeshift. All right, everyone. As you can see, I have one confirmation now. And we are going to sh shapeshift this 0 0.01 BTC into Dash. So all you need to do is click on the Fox icon. And then this uh, so-called div will collapse and will prompt you on how much you want to spend and because I only have 0 0.01 Bitcoin it is accommodating for the network fee for me to send the maximum amount I, I can to get Dash. So all you have to do is click Max, Auto Filled, and Shapeshift BTC Arrow to dash or you can drop this breakdown and select the co digital currency you're looking to shapeshift so now all you need to do is click shift shapeshift confirmation 0 0.009 bitcoin and i will receive 0 0.1411 dash and it already accommodated for the Bitcoin mining fee. And all you need to do is click confirm. Transaction sent. And now I can go to Dash and I will be back in a moment once I received the Dash. Uh, Shapeshift takes approximately 30 minutes maximum in my experience depending on how much traffic that the shapeshift shape service is enduring at the time. I have received my dash through shapeshift. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I will get to them as quickly as I possibly can. Thank you for everyone watching. All right, thank you and hope you all have a great day. Hello everyone. I wanted to tell you about Dash mobile wallets. I wanted to tell you where you can find them, what devices are supported, and what mobile wallets are considered. So, like most resources for Dash, you can find it at dash.org. But today, since we're talking about wallets, you need to go to dash.org slash wallets link will be available in the description. Here is dash.org slash wallets. This is your go-to to find out about Dash wallets. So right here in the beginning we see the desktop wallets, uh, Windows 64-bit, Windows 32-bit, OS 10, or OS X, sorry about that, Linux. And here we have mobile wallets. So there is a Dash wallet develop, developed by Hash Engineering. Uh, Koino, Koinomi and Jax. And those are all for Android mobile devices and on iOS. Uh, right now, dash.org slash wallets is only showing the Jax wallet on their platform. However, they just released an iOS version of the Dash official wallet from the Dash Foundation. And in the next lecture, I will be showing you 
how to install it and where everything is completely hands-on so stay tuned to that with that being said let's let me say something about jacks real quick if you watched the previous lecture that goes over how to install jacks and pretty much everything associated in that lecture is how to install jacks on any platform it is all very similar and anyway let's continue so what are mobile wallets considered mobile wallets are considered a hot wallet because mobile devices are almost always online unless your phone is in airplane mode or uh, turned off. Um, it's always connected to the network so it doesn't make it as secure as other devices such as hardware wallets which I will go over in another lecture. So when storing Dash or any other digital currency I highly advise storing a very little amount, maybe one or two dash. Right now at the price is about two hundred dollars. And you just you just don't want to take you wanna take precautions and not risk everything in something that is actively online. And in another lecture, I'm going to be talking about paper wallets, which is another form of cold wallet, like hardware wallets. If you have any questions about Dash mobile wallets, and if you need any assistance installing them, I would be happy to help you. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the next lecture. Hello everyone. In this lecture, I'm going to be talking about how to set up the Dash wallet on the iOS platform. I'm demonstrating this on my iPhone, actually. So, all you need to do is click on the App Store. At the top, you're going to search for the Dash Foundation. It's just pretty much easier to find it that way. Uh, you'll get some other app the Dash News, and then the Dash Wallet. As you can see, I already downloaded it before, so I'm just going to download it from the cloud this time. Once that's downloaded, click Open, or you could click Open, or go to where the app installed. So you can either recover a wallet or create a new wallet. Um, if you click Recover Wallet, all you have to do is enter your 12 character pass not 12 character 12 word passphrase and click done at the bottom and you recovered your old wallet but today let's create that new one so as you can see to start a new wallet you'll need to generate a wallet recovery passphrase uh, this video is just for demonstration I am not going to be using this recovery passphrase so you want to try and recover it go for it but you won't see any dash in the wallet so generate passphrase don't let anyone see this again this is just dem for demonstration click show there is my recovery passphrase it says please write it down and please do write it down don't just click remind me later and file it away, do whatever you need to do to keep your wallet secure. Click. Once you have it written down, click Remind Me Later. Create a simple four pin passphrase. Oh, 0827 was mine. Click Dash at the top, it tells you the balance of dash and how much dash equals or how much one dash is to Bitcoin so once you open the app you'll start on the receive dash page here you'll see the QR code and then you'll see the dash receiving address 
So with the QR code, anyone with a Dash wallet can scan it, send you some Dash, plain and simple. Uh, the Dash address that you see at the bottom will actually change every time you receive money, or not money, well, oh, I guess it is money, but every time you receive Dash, it will change. However, you can use that same receiving address multiple times and your dash will still show up in your dash wallet all right if you swipe to the left you'll see the send dash page here you can actually click scan qr and i actually have a dash paper wallet that i got from the dash uh, conference i would say in Arizona in March actually so let's take a look at that you okay to use camera boom there's the dash paper wallet click X to cancel enter my passphrase now I'm back in the wallet if you click pay address from clipboard You get a message saying clipboard does not contain a valid dash address or bitcoin address click ok this is when you received uh... someone else's dash address from a text message or from on, over facebook or anything like that uh... it'll paste it and then you can send any dollar amount worth of dash to that wallet At the very bottom, you see Instant Send is enabled. This is fantastic, actually. Uh, when using Instant Send, uh, if you're new to Dash, you pay a little bit higher fee. But when you send the Dash, it is automatically conf gets five confirmations from the Masternode second tier network. And then you just have to wait for a regular transaction or confirmation. So, lastly, let's pop over to the hamburger. The hamburger is in the top left-hand corner. As you can see, since we just created this wallet, we have no transactions. We can import a private key. However, I do not want to do that at this time. And then we have settings. And let's just go through this real quick. Uh, there's about at the top. Uh, this is the Dash wallet, and it is based on the open source wallet made by Bread Wallet. Let's go back. So, recovery passphrase, if you click on that, it says, warning, do not show anyone. I'm going to show you guys, because you already saw it there. And so you can go back in and rewrite it down, but it's better to rewrite it first, just in case you don't remember your pin. So your local currency, uh, I'm in the United States, so I have US dollar, and the wallet supports all of these fiat currencies. If you don't know what fiat is, it is just your country's main dollar. And then you have touch ID limit, default is one dash and this is it will always require your pin if you have one if you send over one dash but you can set it to if you want to send as little as 0.01 dash or 0.1 dash and then lastly dash 10 if you want to send 10 dash which is $1500 is required to use your pin. So with that being said, I'm just going to leave it as default and I'll probably leave it on default on my real wallet. And then enable notifications. So this is on by default. If you want to receive notifications if someone sends you Dash, by all means leave it on. If you want it to be more anonymous and you don't want people walking by and seeing your uh, iPhone light up and see you have a Dash Wallet notification. Uh, 
turn it off. Uh, change password. This is just your PIN. And then start over with a new wallet. With this, you'll have to write or type in all the words, all 12 words from your recovery passphrase and then you'll have the option to start a new wallet. It'll just bring you back to that main screen of new wallet or recover a wallet. But even if you're resetting this wallet, you're able to recover the old passphrase as long as you wrote it down. Lastly, rescan blockchain. Um, if your funds in the Dash wallet aren't seeming like they should be, uh, click Rescan Blockchain, and you'll see the bar at the very top. It's rescanning the blockchain. So, say right now I have zero Dash, but let's say I had one Dash on this wallet, and it's not showing up. Then you would rescan the blockchain. As long as you know that you confirm your confirmation has over six con confirmations. Um, thank you everyone for watching, and I hope you enjoy the next lecture. Hello everyone. Today in this lecture, we're going to be talking about the Exodus wallet. Uh, what is the Exodus wallet? It is a multi-digital currency platform, similar to Jax, actually, but Exodus offers a different perspective on how they want you to view your digital assets. So let's begin here by checking out a quick view of their portfolio. Here you can see on the left there's four or there's six options, but for the main function of the wallet there's portfolio where you can see all the diversification of the digital currency. Don't worry, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to set up this wallet in a few moments. And then they have wallet on the left where it just shows you the breakdown of the actual quantity of the coins and not just a wheel to see the diversification based on percentages. And then they have exchange. Uh, the exchange is based on uh, Shapeshift, uh, Exodus Wallet has a partnership with Shapeshift.io, and you can, for every coin that's already integrated into Exodus, you can directly exchange those coins. And then backup, they have a backup email, as well as you can get the recovery passphrase for this wallet too. And then settings, you can change skins and whatnot, and then help if you have any potential FAQs or how to contact the support team if you need assistance. So, and then here's just an example of an exchange and the quantity of the portfolio for the, to show multi-wallet assets. And they want to a reference that you are in control of your keys. They don't have any of your private keys for any of the coin wallets. Um, the only thing I believe they back up or they use your email as a, a reference in order to uh, help you recover your password so you can log into your wallet. Uh, super user friendly and here are the creators of the Exodus wallet, but let's actually just jump into how to install the wallet so we can get some hands-on experience with it. Um, you can visit their website at exodus.io for yourself. I'll have their website in the description so you know how and where you can get the wallet. So let's click download, and we are well, I'm on a Mac today, so let's actually click Mac. And we are downloading right now. We just finished the download. Click Install. And this is the latest version of the Exodus Wallet. 
copy that over. It's in the applications. Open applications, Exodus, starting up in my dock at the bottom, and open. All right, so here is the Exodus wallet. Uh, we need, it's already set up, super easy. Uh, let's go over it real quick. So here is the welcome screen. Uh, it's gonna be like this the first time, I believe. And it shows all the coins that are currently integrated. And a key importance that we're gonna go over is get started by setting or sending assets to your wallet or restore from backup restoring from backup is essential so what we need to do is let's do a quick tour so right now let's click wallets on the left there is default bitcoin the granddaddy or the original digital currency we have auger at the top or Aragon, sorry, then Augur, Bitcoin, Dash. I have actually not heard of this one. Uh, EOS, Ethereum, Gollum, and Litecoin. Then we have Exchange. This is the Shapeshift integration. Uh, Shapeshift is not being branded. The, uh, Exodus wants this wallet to be as simple as possible for the user. So if we had funds, all we would have to do, let's say we had Bitcoin and we had one Bitcoin in there, we could say one. I want to exchange one or point one Bitcoin for Ethereum. And we would get 1.15 Ethereum. And as you can see, because we actually don't have those funds, not enough funds pops up. So let's continue to, actually let's go to settings first. So in settings it has all these variety of skins. Uh, personalities, these are all individuals that are pretty popular on YouTube. And I actually like, ooh, the Matrix, sweet. But prior to this wallet, I had the Dash focused. Uh, localization, it is just what your preferred uh, currency is, like a uh, government currency, government currency. And then assets. Oh, they actually don't have Doge uh, auto checked. So here you can show and hide your digital currencies. Um, I am going to uncheck all the ones that I don't currently use. So Aragon, Augur, uh, EOS, Gollum. So right now we just will have Bitcoin always active and Ethereum always active. With these always active, it allows them to add any anything that is similar to their signature blockchain. So it was easy to integrate Dash because Dash is similar to the Bitcoin white paper. However, it has a bunch of more added features. So if we go back to portfolio, you'll see that there is only Bitcoin, Dash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So let's get our backup set up. So right now, we have to send our first deposit in order to set up with the backup wizard. So I will be sending some Dash actually. So or to receive Dash to the new wallet, all you need to do is click receive. And if you have one of the mobile wallets set up actually and you have some Dash on there, you can actually scan the QR code and send dash to this wallet address. So let me send over some dash now. All right, I'm going to send over one or point one dash to this wallet. So let's me do that real quick. All right, 
boom, got the dash. Oh, gotta love instant send, everybody. So, we just received our first dash a second ago. So, let's go to backup. Now we need to create a password. Um, this is just an example. I am going to restore this wallet once I'm complete. So, for simplicity, let's just make a easy password. Dash lover. Click next. Make sure your password is memorized. So this is confirmation. Uh, like even when you create an email, you type in your password once and you type in your password again to make sure that they believe that you have it memorized. So dash lover, click next. And this is your recovery phrase. Um, if you set up a wallet with me before or looking forward to installing the wa Dash wallet on the iOS, uh, you need to make sure you write these down. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, now that I have them written down, let's click Next. And this is a backup email. So, I'm going to be blurring out my email address for this. Once you have your email typed in, click Finish. Takes a second. And I have my email blurred out again in the bottom left-hand corner. And you should receive, like I just did, a support at exodus.io. So, now that email, sorry. And that's pretty much all you need to do to set up your Exodus wallet. Um, make I cannot say this enough, but make sure that you store your written down 12 word passphrase uh, somewhere secure. Um, just don't leave it out laying around. Don't leave it just somewhere obvious. And that's it for the Exodus lecture. Um, if you have any questions about the Exodus wallet, please leave a comment and I will get to it as quickly as possible. And I hope you all enjoy the next lecture. Thank you very much and have a great day. Hello everyone. In this lecture, we're going to be covering another way to store your Dash. Um, this is actually a Dash paper wallet generator. And a paper wallet is exactly what it sounds like. It is literally a piece of paper. So there's two ways you can get to this web website. Uh, go to paper.dash.org. This information will be in the description. Or you can go to the Dash official website at www.dash.org and click download wallet and then all wallets scroll all the way down to the bottom to paper and click set up instructions and then paper.dash.org and this will bring you to the exact same website and once you get to this page all you need to do is move your mouse around or in the text box type random characters but we're going to keep moving the mouse around. This is a form of generating uh, random characters on your computer. So your dash address will be completely random. And every time you do this, it is going to be a brand new address never used before. And as you see, we got to 100%. And you got, or I received, uh, new addresses. A dash address, the share is actually your public address. This is, you can send this address out to your mom, anybody that you know, if you want to, them to receive or to send you Dash. And you can actually use your Dash iOS phone or app to extract 
from the private key, the dash that is on your wallet. So with that being said, you can actually generate new addresses now. Like you, all you have to do is click new address and you see this address and this at the secret or the share and the secret key address actually changed. I can click this as many times as I want and it'll be different every single time. We're also going to be covering paper wallets and bulk wallets in this lecture. So paper wallets are these cool nifty little uh, designed wallets where you can actually fold them to hide the private key and or you can even tear off the private key and st stash it somewhere and carry around the dash load and verify address with you. But if you want to just store a certain amount of dash on here, as you can see in this printout that I made, uh, sorry I don't have printer ink right now, but I wrote in 200 dash at the bottom and you can, whatever amount you want to load on there, you can load it up on there and uh, go from there. Alright, so back to the paper wallet. Here you can actually generate as many addresses as you want. Addresses per page, let's just do one page. Generate, and as you can see it'll just go all the way down. So the printout would probably end up being on maybe five pages. Also, you can hide the art, and then it would just look like the single wallet pages. And then for bulk wallet, this is pretty incredible. You can just come here, generate only the private key, or the public key, and your private key. And you can generate as many as you want. Let's generate 100. As you can see, the address countdown is going down, and it will appear 100 dash addresses. Here is a good source to come to if you actually want to start accepting dash on your website. And all you have to do is just check out some of this little information that they provide below. Thank you everyone for listening to the Dash Paper Wallet Lecture. As always, if you have any questions, please ask. I encourage it. And if you're interested in what other Dash Paper Wallets there are out there, uh, feel free to ask below too. Uh, the primary ones are Single Wallet and Paper Wallets. Thank you everyone, and I hope you enjoy the next lecture. Hello everyone. In this lecture, I wanted to talk about hardware wallets. What is a hardware wallet? It's a device that allows you to store digital currencies not connected to the internet. These devices can also be co considered cold storage devices. And I'm going to be going through wallet examples. Unfortunately, in this lecture, I won't be going over how to set them up. Uh, a lot of hardware wallets are typically on back order because they're in high demand. I will be going over how to install these in a bonus lecture in the future when I'm able to get my hand on uh, some of these hardware wallets. With that being said, let's dive deep into Trezor. Here we are at Trezor's main website, uh, trezor.io. Uh, originally, like most products, it was Bitcoin focused. However, Trezor can actually support a vast variety of digital currencies. As you can see, there is a quick pick of what the Trezor actually looks like. Usually, uh, the hardware wallets I'm going to be going over are usually two button factored meaning there's a left button and a right button. This allows you to unlock the device via a PIN password, like in uh, the iOS wallet. You have the four-digit PIN. It's similar to that aspect. As you can see, it is 89 euros, 
and it's supported on multiple platforms, even Android. So you can plug your Trezor into your uh, Android tablet if you want to. Here are the some of the cryptocurrencies that Trezor actually supports. And if you don't know what ERC-20 is, it is uh, coins that are developed on a similar path as Ethereum. So it's easy to integrate those digital currencies. Uh, Two-factor author authentication and a password manager. Uh, it's very easy to set up. All you need to do is, uh, once this page loads, it is just a simple Chrome extension. And it'll be up here in the top right hand corner. If you actually have any in-depth questions about Trezor, I can help you find them. Um, thank you everyone. Let's just keep the ball rolling and let's move on to the Ledger Wallet. So with the Ledger Wallet, which I actually have, I have a Ledger Nano at S, and they have two forms. There is a Ledger Blue, which is more like a, a touchpad, kind of, but it costs a significant amount more. So if we go back to the main page, we will check out the Ledger Nano S. Uh, the Ledger Nano S supports a variety of digital currencies as well, and I'm going over it because it supports Dash. And as you can see, expected shipping date for all orders will be processed from our factory September 4th. It is right now July 24th, so it is pretty much on a two-month delay. Eh, yeah. So, as you can see, uh, Ledger Nano S is very simple compared or very simple like the Trezor and it has the two buttons you use to enter your pin to unlock it and it comes with a nifty little uh, neck lanyard um, there was one aspect about the Trezor I did not go over. If you are using the Trezor and for Dash, you can actually set up your masternode using that wallet. So that is just an added bonus for the Trezor. So let's carry on to the Keep Key. The Keep Key is actually very sleek. It is user friendly and it is very, very secure. When setting it up, it'll have a Chrome extension again, but when you open it and connect it, you'll see certain numbers show up on the screen on like a keypad, uh, like uh, a 10 keypad. Uh, you'll have to, certain numbers will show up on the screen and they'll be mixed up on the keypad. It won't just be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, bottom to top. Those numbers will be mixed up. So the only way you'll have the true anonymous way of if someone was hacked into your computer or something, they wouldn't be able to know how to unlock your device. So that's very beneficial. Let's check out the sleek design. Uh, it is a, just a screen. The back is stainless steel, I believe. And you just plug it in like any other device with just via USB. Very simple. Oh, and here is an image of the breakdown for the keep key. And here is your pin. So you'll have to click on your computer screen one in the top right corner and then drop down to two in the middle row on the far left. It's not just going to be 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're all mixed up, and it'll be unique every time you unlock it. Uh, thank you everyone for joining me in this lecture. I am sorry that I wasn't able to do a hands-on setup with every single one of these wallets. In the future, I will be adding a bonus lecture when I'm able to get one of these devices when they're not on back order. With that being said, thank you. If you have any questions, please ask. And if you are looking for advice, I can point out more resources for you in order to best pick the proper device for you if you want to be more secure with your dash. Um, thank you everyone and I hope you enjoy the next lecture. Hello everyone. Um, in this lecture I wanted to talk to you guys about wallet safety. It is key to make sure that all your digital assets are safe and secure. Uh, because you are the bank when dealing with digital currencies. So you need to do whatever precautions you can to keep your assets safe. I wanted to talk about hot wallets and cold wallets. We've actually already reviewed some so-called hot wallets. Hot wallets are wallets that are always connected to the internet. These hot wallets that are always connected to the internet are the Jax wallet, the Exodus wallet, and the Dashcore QT wallet, as well as the mobile wallets. Um, when keeping Dash or any other digital currencies in these hot, uh, so-called hot wallets, you want to make sure that you're not holding large sums. So say if you have a, a desktop wallet that has like 50 Bitcoin in it or something like that, some outrageous amount, you are more, susces you are more susceptible, sorry about that, you are more susceptible to getting targeted for someone to potentially hack your computer and steal your digital currencies. The likelihood of this actually happening is pretty low compared to losing your cryptocurrency in an exchange. Another thing that I don't have listed on wallet safety is keeping your digital currencies in an exchange. The ex exchanges aren't promising you security or anything like that. And the only time you should have your cryptocurrency or digital currency in, ex in an exchange is if you're wanting to trade for it or even or sell it for your country's uh, fiat or paper money. Now on to cold wallets. What are the cold wallets? They are devices that can be temporarily connected to the internet in order to set them up for the first time or reconnect them to check your values anything like that uh, these are these are hardware wallets such as the Trezor uh, the Ledger wallet and the Keep Key these are just some examples and another actually another cold wallet is the paper wallet Um, if you guys have any questions about wallet safety, um, please ask questions. I encourage it. Um, wallet safety is number one. Um, thank you, and I hope you all enjoy the next section. All right, everyone. By this time in the lecture, you might be wondering, well, you've talked about Dash, you've said how to store Dash, but what about getting it? Well, in this section, we're actually going to be covering that. Uh, you are able to buy or trade for Dash with multiple platforms. Uh, in this section, I will be talking about Changely, Dashes, Shapeshift, 
Poloniex, and Wall of Coins. Uh, Changely and Shapeshift are pretty similar. Dashes is a meetup, and Wall of, Coin Wall of Coins is an exchange for cash to Dash. And then Poloniex is you can trade seeking certain values. So say Bitcoin is $20 and Dash, or you want $20 worth of Dash, but you only want to pay $18 worth of Bitcoin, you can set those uh, standards. Anyway, let's dive deep into this section and let's get the ball rolling. Hi everyone, I'm Albert. Today, I'm showing you how to buy Dash on WallofCoins.com. WallofCoins.com is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace uh, that will match you with the best buying option to exchange fiat or paper money to Dash. And today, I'm planning on buying $200 worth. So first, make sure that you have the proper coin selected. Uh, I already do, Dash. Uh, click buy, find my location. Uh, this just allows Wall of Coins to find the best payment center for you. All right, now uh, supply your Dash address. It's the process a little bit quicker once you, if you supply your Dash address right now versus later. So paste my Dash address. Click next. I'm looking to buy two hundred dollars worth of dash. Next. So, uh, for me, the best option is Bank of America. So I'm getting dash at forty-four dollars and seven cents a dash. Uh, click order. Type in my email address. Uh, of course, it's blurred out. It's not required to send an email address, but I already have an account number with Wall of Coins, so it will automatically log me in. And I'm going to blur out my phone number as well. And then, like I said, I already have a pass or an account with Wall of Coins, so all I have to do is type in my password. And now I'm going to receive a text verification in a moment. And once I do that, then I can go do whatever I want and make my deposit within two hours and then I can get my dash. All right, got, just got my purchase code, 76UVF. Uh, all verification codes are gonna be different every single time. So I'm gonna blur out this person's account information. Uh, all I have to do is go to Bank of America uh, fill out a deposit slip, walk up to the teller and say, hey, I need to make a deposit, a cash deposit into this person's account. And that's it. Hey everybody, um, I just got in my car, uh, still sitting in the driveway, uh, safety first, uh, going to the bank right now. Uh, so uh, I'll make a little clip once I get to the bank and walk in, make, make my deposit and then good to go. All right, talk to you guys in a bit. All right, I just got to the bank. Uh, now I just need to go in with my $200 and make the cash deposit into the person's account that I bought Dash from. All right, uh, talk to you guys soon. All right, everyone, I just made my uh, $200 cash deposit into someone's account that I've never met before and Thanks to Wall of Coins, it makes it easy for me to just go in, deposit cash, and get my dash. And now I'm just going to go out, do some errands, and when I get home, I should see 
the dash that I paid for in my dash uh, core QT wallet. So, uh, yeah. All right, everyone, uh, I'm home uh, from doing my errands, and you can see the how to buy on Wall of Coins. Got my 4.538 dash for $200. Uh, yeah, the uh, whole process went very smoothly. With that being said, I'd suggest trying out Wall of Coins at least once. Uh, have a great day. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to trade Bitcoin and get Dash on Changely.com. Changely.com is an exchange that will find the best rate for the cryptocurrency that you're looking to exchange. One awesome thing about Changely is they'll always charge you one fee for each exchange, which is 0.5%. And today uh, I already have an account, so I'm going to be demonstrating how to exchange 0 0.02 Bitcoin to get Dash. In this case, 0 0.31 dash. To start, click Exchange. I have 0 0.02 Bitcoin, and right here, it Changely is saying that one Bitcoin is about 15.87 dash. And here is below that is the fee included, which is 0.5 percent, so 0 0.001 dash. All right. And then for 0 0.02 Bitcoin, I'm going to get 0 0.31 dash. In about 5 to 30 minutes for the trade time. So let's open my Dash Core wallet for this example. Receiving address. Let's copy it. Copy address. Okay. Let's verify the address real quick. Uh, XEQVT. XEQVT. All right, next. Check all the details before I process. 0 0.02 Bitcoin. There, dash, address. The fee. Good. Transaction, good. Confirm and make payment. Awesome. They give me a QR code and I'll be sent, scanning that QR code with a Bitcoin wallet on my phone. Now I just need to send 0 0.02 Bitcoin. Hey, scan my thumb. All right, since I cha or scanned my thumb, a transaction number showed up, and I received my dash, actually. I'm grabbing that wallet, uh, the Changely custom address I made, and 0 .031 dash. Three out of six conversion, or confirmations. Um, leave your comments below in the description of what you thought of Changely. And please subscribe. Thank you. I hope you all have a great day. Hello, everyone. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about Shapeshift.io. They are a cryptocurrency, or as I like to say, digital currency broker. Um, they are very similar to Changely.com. Uh, that was in another video I made. Uh, Shape. Shapeshift offers a variety of digital assets that you can exchange for each other. Um, you might have actually noticed Shapeshift before in the Exodus wallet, for example. Uh, if you click Exchange and Exchange at the top for Bitcoin or and receive Ether. Um, also, Shapeshift is integrated into the Jax wallet. Uh, Jax has many forms of the wallet, desktop, browser, mobile. Uh, I have another lecture on that. 
Anyway, let's continue with Shapeshift.io. Uh, Shapeshift.io is fairly quick with their transactions. Uh, the longest that I've actually had a transaction take was about 30 minutes, and that is pretty rare, actually. So, let's continue. So, they are really easy. I'm going to show you step by step on how to exchange Bitcoin for Dash. Um, they're very safe. Uh, they have fail safes like if for some reason the exchange fails, they will return your Bitcoin to you. And they're very competitive with their rates um, as always. Um, they show all the recent transactions. Someone just exchanged Bitcoin for EOS. Yes, okay, 20 minutes ago. And then EOS to Bitcoin two minutes ago. Their 24-hour statistics is pretty impressive. Uh, 11,600 transactions. 459 seconds per transaction. That's about seven and a half minutes. Um, most popular, Bitcoin to Ethereum, and Bitcoin volume equivalent, 4,389 Bitcoin, which is quite a lot, even though the market has taken a, taken a dip. Anyway, let's continue with an exchange for Bitcoin and Dash. Today we're going to be doing a quick transaction versus compared to a provide precise sorry about that a uh, quick transaction is exactly what it sounds like you want to just get what you, or you're just taking one digital asset for another digital asset you just want it as quickly as possible um, sometimes there could be some wiggle room such as uh, if you're buying like or exchanging twenty dollars worth of bitcoin you might get like $17 worth of dash in that case and then precise is precise you want $20 for a bitcoin and receive $20 worth of dash but let's continue so the dash address I want to use I'm just gonna pull it out of my exodus wallet receive you can check it out if you want don't keep many coins on my exodus wallet uh, your dash address just paste it i like to verify it uh just do the first four xr5 e or w xr5 w uh, last pc or pwc 7 h yep, that's right okay and then the bitcoin address just in case something were to happen copy paste let's check it out real quick if you would like and then let's start this transaction alrighty waiting for the deposit deposit up to point almost one Bitcoin so let's take their deposit address copy Pull over the Exodus, paste, double check it, uh, 1KBO, 1KBO, at the end we have UCAK, UCAK, I'm just going to send over 0 0.01 Bitcoin today, 2172 USD. Alright, let's send. Transaction successful. Waiting deposit. Uh, since the Bitcoin blockchain usually takes about 10 minutes to confirm every block, I don't know if I'm going to be getting in an early block or the current block. Or getting in a current block or one that is just looking for. So the payment is pending and I will resume this once the exchange is complete. In 
minutes. I'm going to pull over my Exodus wallet for this. So, I received it about three minutes ago. So, 20, 21.13 now. So, and I sent over, what, 21.70. So, I lost 70 cents in the exchange, but that's essentially what the mining fee is. And I don't really care, I guess. So, it is what it is. But I got 0.14 dash, and I'm actually pretty pleased with that exchange. Um... All in all, to exchange like Bitcoin or Dash for another digital currency that you think is uh, superior in your view, um, go for it. Uh, just make sure that Shapeshift offers the digital asset you're looking for. They offer a huge variety of digital assets in order to exchange for one for one. Enjoy the next one. Hello everyone, I am Albert. Today I wanted to talk about Dashes. What is Dashes exactly? It is a peer-to-peer -peer way in order to buy or exchange uh, paper money for Dash. Uh, it is similar to the original local Bitcoins. If you were around during the early days of Bitcoin. Uh, the key concept behind it is to search for your area and find someone that's looking to sell or buy Dash. So today I'm just going to show you quickly how it can be done. Um, I live in Seattle, Washington. I'm going to search my area for people selling Dash. Right now there's someone buying Dash right now in Renton, Washington. It's about 10 miles from me, but they're looking to buy Dash at a, what would that be, about 5% below market, which doesn't really seem very, very realistic. But for me to buy Dash from someone, I am actually would have to drive to Canada, which is unfortunate even with the essentially, what, almost 25% difference between the USD and the CAD. So, all around, Dashes is a great way to meet up with someone. You can learn about Dash or even buy Dash or from them. So, overall, it, I'm sure it would be a great experience. And I'd if there's a buyer or seller anywhere near you, I'd actually just try try out Dashes. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to show you how to trade other cryptocurrencies in order to get Dash. Uh, I'm going to be using a platform called Poloniex. It is a multi-crypto currency exchange where you can trade crypto cryptocurrencies you currently have in order to obtain others. In this case, today, I'm going to be trading for Dash. So we're going to be logging in to Poloniex. Once you're logged into Poloniex, go to the top and go to Balances, click Deposits and Withdrawals, and this will load your Balances, Deposits, and Withdrawals page. Today I'm going to be depositing some Bitcoin, and when you click Deposit, it'll bring you your Bitcoin address that you need to send the Bitcoin to, or if you have a mobile wallet, you can scan a QR code and send your Bitcoin. So today we're going to be copying the Bitcoin address. And right now, for this tutorial, I bought some Bitcoin on Coinbase. So I have about $25 worth of Bitcoin right now on my Coinbase account. So we're going to be sending that to my Poloniex address in order to trade the Bitcoin for Dash. 
So let's send 0 0.0238 in, in order to cover the network fee. A good practice is to compare the first five and the last five characters of the address to where you're sending it. However, I've sent an immense amount of Bitcoin in order to trade for Dash to this address, so I'm comfortable with it being without double checking it. So click confirm. And now the send is complete. So now what you can do is actually wait for the funds to be available to trade on Poloniex. I'll be back in a moment as soon as the funds are available. Hello everyone, uh, we're back on Poloniex uh, for the balances, deposits, and withdrawals section. Uh, as you can see right here under BTC or Bitcoin that my, my about $25 worth of Bitcoin was added to Poloniex in order to exchange. So start off by clicking the exchange in the top left and right now we are waiting for the uh, trading chart to load. So let's go over a little bit of the basics of Poloniex. Uh, if you look over here on the right you see markets and there is a BTC, Ethereum, Monero, and USD D trading market and it tells you the val or the USD market tells you the value approximately of what each currency is worth. So right now Dash is 101.60 USD. Up, oh, it just bumped up to 102. And then Monero, you can trade Monero directly for Dash, Zcash or Litecoin, and Ethereum. You can trade for these coins. Uh, cryptos. So, but today, since I have Bitcoin readily available to trade, we're going to be trading for Dash right now. So what Poloniex has is, let me blow it up, a buy Dash or sell Dash option. These are the two main that are always used. So right now you can see below the sell orders and the buy orders. So the buy orders are people that are looking to buy Dash for said, said price. And on the sell orders is the people looking to sell their Dash for said price. Today, I'm gonna to be buying Dash at the lowest ask price, which is 0 0.0983 BTC. So what I can do is simply click the amount of BTC that I have, and then this will directly give me the full amount of BTC that I can get. So in this case, 0 0.2418 dash. So simply click buy. An order was created. And what I can do now is go to orders, my open orders and there's no orders in there so my order must have been fulfilled. Now go to dash and withdraw or I mean deposit and withdraw. All right. All right, now that we're back at balances, deposits and withdrawal after clicking on deposits and withdrawal in the balance tab, we can scroll down to see that there is no more BTC in my account. And now we have dash. So what we can do now is click withdrawal and enter the dash address that I'm looking for. So now that I have my dash address I can just do command V and paste it here and in order to withdraw the full amount that you traded for 
All you have to do is click the quantity of Dash that you have available in your account. And of course, the transaction fee, Poloniex, will automatically deduct that for you. So in this case, I'm going to get 0 0.2315 Dash. All I have to do is click Withdraw. And Poloniex will process this transaction. And then you should get an email with your Poloniex account verifying that you made the withdrawal and then you need to click confirm. Once you click confirmed, that is the final thing that needs to be done. Confirmed, withdrawal confirmed. Your withdrawal has been sent successfully confirmed. So now once the now you just have to wait for your funds to be sent to your Dash wallet that you created your Dash address with. Uh, thank you for watching how to trade Bitcoin for Dash using Poloniex. Hello everyone. In this lecture I'm gonna make it pretty brief just because we have already covered some of these areas. Um, in the last lecture I covered how you can sell your Dash directly for cash. So, with that being said, um, what if you are trying to acquire another currency instead of Dash? You have the same sources that we've already used in the past, uh, Changely and Shapeshift, and if you're using the Exodus wallet, remember, you can actually exchange directly in the wallet. So I'm going to do a very quick overview of how we can go about this. So all you need to do is make sure when you come to Changely that you have Dash selected and how many Dash you want to exchange. So if we want, let's just say we're looking to get some Litecoin. We have one Dash and we will get 4.057 Litecoin. All you'd have to do is click Next, or Exchange, sorry about that. Click Next once you see what you're going to get. And then they'll also include their half a percent fee. And then all you have to do is plug in your Litecoin address. It is exactly like how we did the first one when we were trying to exchange Bitcoin to Dash. All right, so let's go to Shapeshift. When you first come to Shapeshift, all you need to do is select which digital asset you're looking to deposit and which one you're looking to receive. So all you need to do is click the image for the symbol and then click the dash symbol and then go over to the receive symbol and let's say we are looking to get wow they actually have so many digital currencies so let's just click Bitcoin so remember quick you just want the exchange as quickly as possible. You don't really care what the exchange rate is. Uh, if you put in on quick, if you put in $20 worth of Dash, you might get $17 worth of Bitcoin, and that's not including the fee. But if you want precise, remember you'll get $20, for your $20 worth of Dash, you'll get $20 minus the fee for the Bitcoin. All you have to do is click continue. The deposit amount, one dash, and then they'll give you a rough estimate for quick about how much Bitcoin you'll receive. And then you put in your Bitcoin address and then your dash refund address just in case the transaction fails. And then you click I agree to terms, start transaction, then you send over your one dash. Easy as that. 
All right, everyone. I hope you found this brief lecture useful. If you need more of a hands-on experience, I would like to refer you to the Shapeshift or Changely lectures of when we switched Bitcoin to Dash. Thank you, and I actually hope, or I hope you enjoy the next lecture with Dashes, because remember with Dashes, that is also another way to buy Bitcoin directly with paper money. So you can also sell Dash for paper money through local meetups. It's similar to like local Bitcoins or if you're doing a meetup like Craigslist, but make sure that you keep in mind your safety. So meet up somewhere where there's usually a lot of people like a Starbucks, but without blabbering on about that lecture. I'm going to stop here and then we'll talk more about Dashes in the next one. Thank you. Hello everyone. In a previous lecture we actually talked about buying on Dashes, but this time we are going to talk about selling on Dashes. So as you can see, uh, I'm actually based in the Seattle area, so I just typed in Seattle, and there are our there is someone buying Dash near me, as in the how to buy on Dash's video. Uh, this actually is the same person looking to buy Dash at 5% below market, but other than that, no one is selling in my area, unless I want to go to Spokane, Washington, which is on the other side of the state. So. Uh, again, Dashes is like local bitcoins, how it was originally. You make an order, or you buy, or set up to meet someone to buy some Dash, or if you want to sell some Dash, uh, you meet up at a location. Um, what I would recommend is doing it in a public place. Uh, meet up at a local Starbucks where there's usually like five to ten people in there. Uh, make sure that your safety is the number one priority when selling any digital currencies. So click trade request. So all you have to do is create your first one. Uh, if you haven't signed up already, in the beginning on the left hand side you'll see uh, login and then sign up. Just click the sign up. All they need is username, email, password, and just verify your email address via a support email from one of the or from the creator of Dashes. So all you need to do is create a name for your Dash, say Dash with minimal mark up. All right, description, just say, um, looking to sell dash at 5% above market. Next, you need to fill out the location of trade. Um, they even su make suggestions of how and where to make suggestions, like Craigslist. Uh, it's not a good idea to sell anything from your home. It's always better to meet somewhere. So, let's, I can just say downtown Seattle Starbucks. And uh, you can say what hours you're going to be there. You can be more specific and actually put in the address. I can just say I'm there at 11 a.m. to noon. And then trade type, what you're doing, selling or buying. And then your currency. And then percentage of profit, I'm going to say 5%. And then I click save. And when, if someone makes an offer, it'll show up here and you will be able to view a message from them saying, oh yeah, I want to 
by your dash and then just go to the meetup say okay one dash right now is a hundred and eighty two dollars and forty seven cents let's just do a hundred and eighty two point four seven times one point oh five just saying like a hundred and five percent so to sell one dash they would need to bring one hundred and ninety one dollars and fifty nine cents but if they have a hundred ninety one dollars I'll probably accept it but again dashes is just another alternative for a meetup option when selling any of your dash if you choose to sell any of your dash um, thank you everyone I hope you enjoyed this section on how to sell dash thank you and I hope you enjoy the next section hello everyone welcome to the advanced section for this course we are going to be talking about uh, special features in the dash core wallet we're going to be covering instant send private send and wallet safeties and backup with that being said I hope you enjoy the first lecture on wallet safety and backup hello everyone in this lecture we're going to be talking about wallet safety and backup um, wallet safety is just encrypting your wallet we covered how to set up an encrypted wallet in the main lecture uh, here in the advanced lecture if you can see in the bottom right hand corner I'll zoom in here you can see that there's a little lock that means that the wallet is encrypted so to, in order to unlock it what we need to do is come up here in the top uh, left hand corner and you'll see uh, settings and all you need to do is click unlock and then enter your passphrase click OK now you can see that the lock is actually unlocked so what you need to do to make sure that your wallet is securely backed up is go to file backup wallet and what you can do actually to make sure that it's very secure is back it up to a USB device and store that somewhere and every time you back up make sure you store that backup on a USB device what I tend to do is actually date my backup as you can see this one is 12 20 12 27 2017 this should actually be 12 27 2016 but that is just an example so you know what file it is and when it was backed up or you can just right click on the file sorry about that you can right click on the file and if I was able to right now let's do this what you can do is right click on the file in the backups folder and get more info or get info and it can tell it tells you where it is the backup when the backup was made oh so that actually is it's February 27 2017 not December okay well that is an example of how to back up your wallet um, if you have any questions about encryptions and backing up your wallet please ask them in the Q&A section and I very much appreciate it thank you everyone and I hope you enjoy the next lecture on private send hello everyone I was really excited to get to this lecture to show one of the best things about dash which is the dash instant send option so what I'm going to be doing is demonstrating how you can use dash instant send and how you can tell that it is 
Dash Instant Send. Uh, Dash Instant Send is another service like Private Send that is hosted by the Masternode tier network. So let's dive deep into this. All you need to do to send a Dash Instant Send transaction is go to Send at the top, where you want to pay it to, and we are going to be, or I'm going to be demonstrating this on my Exodus wallet actually. So just need to copy over the address, pay, pay to, and then my address. I like to double check. So XR5WE, XR5WE, and the last three, C7H, C7H. All right, and then we can create a label, uh, in, instant send demo. All right. As you can see at the bottom, I have 0.99 dash. So let's do 0.99 dash. And I like to subtract the fee from the amount I'm sending. So I know like only this amount came out of my dash wallet. So from there, all you have to do is click instant send at the bottom. And click send. As you can see, another window will pop up and it will show you the breakdown of what your transaction is. As you can see, the Exodus wallet will get 0.962 dash and the transaction fee, which is a little bit larger than normal, is 0 0.027. This allows me to send a transaction instantly and once you click yes, in the top right, it just subtracted the dash. And I received the dash on my Exodus wallet. Let's pop over to tr uh, transactions real quick. As you can see, it was an instant five out of six confirmations. The masternodes si like signed the transaction essentially saying, okay, we will back this transaction as successful. And now all you need to do is wait for the one confirmation. Six confirmations is essentially, okay, this confirmation is 100%. Nothing can happen. It won't be double spent or anything like that. And the master nodes are guaranteeing that. So depending on how full the next block is, my transaction will get in there and be confirmed within two and a half minutes maximum. So the instant send feature is just being confirmed by the master nodes overall. If you have any questions about instant send, please leave them in the Q&A section and I will be happy to assist you. Hello everyone. We are gonna be covering private send today. My goal here is to keep it as basic as possible. I also want you to see it in action, private send does take a few moments to complete, but to make it more convenient, I'm going to speed it up. So, first off, what is Private Send? Well, it is and it isn't what it sounds like. With Private Send, the goal is to give you the financial privacy you are seeking, essentially like having paper money. This is done by taking all your inputs in your wallet, and a quick example of this is this transaction that I sent to my Exodus wallet this morning, or my mom's wallet, or bitcart.io, which is a fantastic service. And then this top transaction for 1.99 dash is an output from my Exodus wallet. So why did I mention these inputs? Well, the private send feature is one of the jobs that the masternodes operate. Also, instant send. Private Send breaks down your Dash inputs into small denominations, so instead of having one Dash, you will, it'll break it down to 0 0.1 or 0 0.01, etc., etc. Or if you have 100 Dash, it'll break it down to 10 Dash or 1 Dash. That is just a given example. So after these denominations are broken down, it mixes your denomination inputs from your wallet with two other people on the network. And please note that coins never 
never, never, never leave your wallet. An easy way to view private send is to break it down into paper money. I'm gonna be going over a quick example of how this is done. And please, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. This is kind of how I view private send working. So, for example, you have person A with $10 and two $10 bills. Person B, they have three $5 bills and five $1 bills. Person C has $10 and two $5 bills. So, what if person A wants $10 or to trade $10 for two fives and person C wants to trade one five for five ones. Well, it kind of will look a little messy because you wouldn't have a facilitator and so it could seem like it could get a bit messy. Say one person doesn't trade hand in hand and someone could run away. But in this scenario, let's just say everyone is happy. So everyone got their money that they wish to trade with one another. And because it's paper money, it's always anonymous, no matter what. And then what if person A decides, oh hey, I need some $1 bills. So they trade one $5 bill with person C to get five ones. And then person B wants another $10 bill, so they give person C two $5 bills. But as you can see, there's not really a safe way for each party to just completely agree. So the bottom line is that there's no way without it being facilitated by a third party to exchange funds between multiple groups. So A has to trade with one person, B has to trade with one person, unless there was a facilitator and we can call them D. They can be the one that makes sure all the transaction or quote unquote inputs are going smoothly. But this can be just viewed as a master node, just mixing all the inputs and making sure each party is distributed their own amount after the fee. So that might have seemed a little bit messy, and I hope it made sense. But if you have any questions about my thought process, please leave them in the comments below. So let's get to the point that you're probably here for. Let's see private send in action by just all you need to do to start this is click mix or start mixing because I have a passphrase. I'll type that in now. So essentially in this process, what you're doing is telling the master node network, hey, I want to mix my dash. The masternode network seeks out two different people that you are sending the same that are sending the same signal as you, aka wishing to mix their dash. The mixing process begins and the masternode mixes the inputs of the three users and instructs the wallet to pay the transformed inputs back into the wallet. The new denominations are in a different address. So let's pop over to transactions so you can see what's happening. When you click on transactions, you can see on the right hand side that there are some fees going out. These are to pay the master node network for service that they're doing. So once all these get paid with six confirmations, the mixing process will commence. And as I stated in the beginning, I'll fast forward this to make it more convenient because this can take a little bit to get started. One thing I do want to point out is to make your funds completely anonymous, I would say let the mixer complete a few rounds. I typically let my mixer run for at least an hour depending on how much dash I'm mixing. You don't need to sit around all day and wait for your mixer to complete. If you're confident that your wallet is very secure, you don't have anything to worry about, so like, before I started mixing, I had to enter my passphrase. All right, everyone, we just let the private send mix for a good while now, about an hour. 
As you can see, the private send balance is 2.73 dash. So when I send a transaction, it'll show multiple outputs for said transaction. So this is an example of one of my past transactions that I've sent. As you can see, each of these addresses have 0.1 denominations for each transaction. And then this one was 1.0. And then most of them are 0.01 or 0.1. Um, as you can see overall, it's pretty pretty great uh, if you're pretty anonymous about what where you're sending your Dash. It's a fantastic service. And all in all, I love it would recommend using it of course but as always all services are optional and do and please remember that there are fees associated with mixing um, as you can see point zero 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 four dash uh, I think that's less than a penny I'm not entirely sure uh, but it's very minimal and Thank you for whichever master node I got stuck with to help me mix with two other people that are on the other side of the planet from me, for all I know, or they could be in the same neighborhood as me, for all I know. But anyway, um, if you have any questions about Private Send, please drop them in the comment section below. Using it is very simple, but understanding it is a little bit more complex. Also, I have a link in the description if you want to learn more about Private Send. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you all have a great day.